Okay, so first of all, I have here long-term carbon dioxide measurements at four different sites from all over the world. And I have plotted this data in this graph. And what usually happens when you plot this data is that you have the increasing trend in carbon dioxide concentrations. And then over the top of this, you have the seasonal cycle in carbon dioxide concentrations. And this data is going from uh, 1982 to the end of 2016. And what I want to do in this video is separate out the increasing trend and the seasonal cycle in carbon dioxide concentrations so that I can look at each of them individually. So first of all, I'm going to type in here equals average, and I'm going to average the first 12 values. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to double click here to fill in the rest of the table. And you can see here I'm averaging the first 12 values and then here I'm averaging the next 12 values and it continues like that all the way down the table. And doing it like this will allow you to smooth out the seasonal cycle so you can just see the increasing trend. Then to look at the seasonal cycle, you need to subtract the actual value from the average. And now I'm going to double click that to fill in the rest of the table as well. Then I'm going to copy these to work out the running average and the monthly residuals for the rest of the sites as well. Now, if I select Barrow and then move these values across, you can see it smooths out the season cycle, so I get just the increasing trend. And before I forget, I need to delete some of these values here because I'm averaging over blank values right at the end. So everything after January 2016 needs to be deleted. I'm going to do that for the rest of the sites as well. And then let's go back up to the top. And now we'll change one lower. And then this site, and then the south pot. And now you can see I've removed the seasonal cycle and I have the increasing trend. Now, if I want to look at the seasonal cycle itself, I will move all of the data along again. And it's making them all disappear at the moment, but that's only because of the axes. They're also small now, you can't see them when the graph is set up like this. So I'm going to change this, make the minimum minus 15 and the maximum 10. And now you can see the seasonal cycle. Because we are minusing these values from the average, all of the values are slightly above, above or below zero. Now, if I edit the horizontal values as well. You can see the cycle in a bit more detail. So if I just go from the beginning of 1990 to the beginning of 2000, now you can see the seasonal cycle more spread out. And you can see this without any of the increasing trend. Okay, and that is it.